want to send a very crystal clear warning to Lyft and Uber because you are violating your own terms of service. And myself, um, having built this YouTube channel, being one of the largest recruiters for Uber and Lyft worldwide, who then changed into one of the largest recruit recruiters for law firms and being an advocate for drivers, I'm putting these companies on notice that I will again spearhead and get another class action lawsuit going if they don't change their ways immediately, right? So here they say, you have reached the cancellation fee limit. You have reached the cancellation fee limit. Um, you have the right to decline, right? You have the right to decline if they're not wearing their masks. You have the right to decline if there are too many passengers, right? But what they are doing is that they are counting those declines as cancellations. Uber and Lyft declines are very, very, very different to cancellations. You cannot put them in one lump bundle and say, okay, well, if they decide to decline for a mask reason, we'll add that as a cancellation. And if a couple of cancellations add up, we are going to send this threatening message. This is the only language they know is to threaten, right? And I am going to threaten them back with legal class action lawsuits because I am going to send this to multiple law firms that I help recruit drive drivers for them, right? This shit needs to end, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like you've reached the limit for health safety cancellation fee. It looks like you've reached the limit for health safety cancellation fee, right? Ladies and gentlemen, what they are doing here is anytime you decline because the person is not wearing a mask, very, very common because the, they want to get five or six people into the car, very, very common. They want to get four people into an UberX or seven people into an XL, very, very common. They are adding that up as cancellations. So... You can reply, but Lyft made it easy for me to handle my issue, right? Strongly agree, agree neither. Make sure you make your case, right, when they start threatening you with these cancellation fee limits. It is wrong on every single level, right? So... A reply to one of the drivers says, after reviewing the issue with my team, we were able to determine that if a driver rejects ride requests, the final ride state is deemed as cancelled. Let me repeat that. After reviewing the issue with my team, this, this, this driver countered, right, and said, I'm not going to be threatened here because what you're doing is you are violating your own terms of conditions by turning declines into cancellations. After reviewing the issue with my team, we were able to determine that if a driver rejects ride requests, the final ride state is deemed as cancelled. We are unable to manually override warnings and that future instances can lead to account deactivation. Please review your email for a detailed description of what is triggering these warnings. For further assistance, do not hesitate to reach us, right? So make notes, right, and screenshots if you are declining for mask or too many passenger reasons, right? And start keeping a file of those because you will see that they quickly bundle those into cancellations and then they ding you. And as they've threatened this individual, we will deactivate you, right? Those threats are only meant for one purpose. Continue driving, continue driving, continue making us money and take every single trip. No matter what the destination, go out there and take it. Don't decline. Don't cancel. We will threaten you with these type of messages and force you to continue. Right? So I don't agree with Lyft's reply here where they said after reviewing the issue with my team we were able to determine that if a driver rejects so you, you're declining 
You're rejecting because of mask reasons. Again, I'm repeating myself as a parrot. You're rejecting, you're declining because of passenger, um, too many passengers. Their team now, right, can um, determine. So if they determine that if the driver rejects the ride, which is a decline because the final ride state is deemed as cancelled. There it is. There it is. So you decline and the final rider state is deemed as cancelled. So let me get this straight, dear attorneys, right? You're not allowed to decline. You have to accept, accept, accept. If you decline a person for getting in your car because they don't have a mask, it becomes, according to this, a cancellation. Too many cancellations, you get deactivated. You guys want to know why so many drivers are being deactivated? Precisely because of this. Because they are turning declines, which you're rightfully allowed to do, according to their legal language. You're allowed to decline if they don't have a mask. You're allowed to decline if there are too many passengers. But guess what? You read it there, black and white. I just showed you. It will be counted as a cancellation. Too many cancellations. Boom. Out go the threats. I would immediately reply with, if this is not immediately addressed, I will have my attorney handle this, right? If you get deactivated over this because they kept on counting those declines as cancellations, off you go to small claims court. Off you go and join a class action lawsuit. If you stand before a judge and bring this argument, you are going to win all day long. You're allowed to decline. However, in the final language, in the final language, if the driver rejects the ride request, the final ride state is deemed as cancelled. Lyft, Uber, you are violating your own terms and terms and conditions. Attorneys that I recruit for, and there are probably about eight law firms that I recruit for around the United States, specifically in Massachusetts, Nevada, and California, listen up. You have yourself another class action lawsuit. I will bring you many of these individuals that have received these threats because Lyft and Uber are not following the guidelines they set forth, right? That's wrong. And this here is a threat that legal action will follow. I make myself very, very clear. I will not tolerate it on behalf of all the drivers because they end up with deactivations, with wrongful deactivations, because you manipulate your legal language and completely switch the terminology and screw over these drivers. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you want to know why uh, deactivations are through the roof because they will not allow drivers to make their own decisions. They want to force you. They want to put the fear into you that you've got to drive, drive, drive wherever we dictate. And if you don't like what we dictate, we will deactivate, right? So I will not stand for that. Have a great day.